Welcome. In the last couple of videos, we have been talking about data types and we've also been talking about arithmetic operators and how we mix this data type with the arithmetic operators. In this video, I want to continue talking about the data types and I want to discuss the size that each of these data types occupy in memory. So let's get started. So on the left, I have a table, and in the first column, I have the data types listed. And on the second column, I have the size in bytes that they occupy. You will notice that booleans and characters, they both require one byte in memory. And integers and floats each require four bytes. Let's talk about each one individually, and then we'll talk about the limitations and the reasons why they occupy the amount of space that they need. Let's start off with boolean. So a boolean, if you recall, I said that there is what? There's two values that we can represent with a boolean. We have a false, and we also have a true. And you will notice, and we said this previously, that a false is numerically represented by the value 0. And a true is represented numerically by the value 1. Now, I've also said in the past that every piece of information no matter how small it is, and really it doesn't get any smaller than this, has to be at least one byte long, which means it has to be eight bits long. Now this is only one bit, which means we have to make it into eight bits. And to do that, we add seven zeros to its left. You will realize that we only have two combinations. We have zero and one, and therefore we don't need any more than that. So we need only one byte to represent a Boolean value, all right? Pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing crazy here. Now let's go take a look at characters. In the last video, I talked about the ASCII standard, and I said that in a char, in a character data type, we can use it to represent characters. This includes letters of the alphabet, digits, punctuations, as well as other characters that we need, and that there are a total of 128 characters. And the highest, the largest character that we can represent has a numeric value of 127. 127 in binary looks like this. It is seven ones, seven ones. And because this seven ones is smaller than a byte, smaller than eight bits, then we have to add a zero to its left. So we said that there were characters such as the letter A, which had a numeric value of 97. Then we have capital A, which had the numeric value of 65. And then in the previous video, I also mentioned that because these characters have an integer representation, that we could also use char, the data type, to store integers, right? So in here, I'm talking about the largest integer that it can represent, which is mapped to a character using the ASCII standard. And this is seven ones. And because it has to be one byte, then we add a zero to its left. Now let's go ahead and talk about integers. Now integers is where it starts to get more interesting. Let's just for an example, look at the value zero. The value zero is just zero, right? Like, you know, kind of how we did with Boolean, false was zero. Well, an integer is zero, so I can put a zero right here. However, this has to be four bytes long, which means it has to be 32 bits, which means that I need 32 zeros. So here we have eight, and then we're going to have another eight for another byte. And then we're going to have another 8 for another byte. I'm just going to delete this so that I can format it. And then we have the fourth byte. And now we have 32 zeros. This is how a zero looks as an integer, which needs four bytes, in binary. But to contrast, let's look at character. So the character also has the value zero, right? So the value zero in character will be what? It'll just be one byte. And it'll be four will be eight zeros. So now you might wonder, if I can represent zero with one byte, why would I want to use an integer? Well, it's a good question. If you only need to represent zero, then you definitely can just use char, and that's it. You don't need to use an integer. However, what happens when that value changes? Because usually you store these values in a variable, and I said the value in a variable can change. Right. So right now, let's say we're talking about money. Right now you have zero dollars. OK, but then maybe in two days from now, it jumps up to five hundred dollars or to a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Well, hopefully. Right. Anyways, so if it jumps up that high, 
I said that the maximum number that the char can represent is 127, which means the moment that the value needs to go beyond 127, a character cannot do it. So an integer has you covered. Therefore, we use integers. Now, I don't want you to be paranoid about, oh my goodness, I'm using a data type for a value that is very small. I could be saving bytes. If you have four gigabytes of RAM, let's just say, you have millions and millions of bytes. So the fact that you use three extra bytes just to represent the value zero, nothing is going to happen. I tell you this because it's good to be aware about what's the, out there. And the second reason is maybe one day you do have to worry about it. Maybe you're dealing with millions of numbers and you realize that if you go to char because your numbers are very small, then you're going to save up a lot of space. So with that being said, we use integers because we're able to represent very large numbers. How big of a number? Well, let's discuss that. An integer and the formula to, to calculate how big of an integer we can represent goes as follow is two to the number of bits that we have. So four bytes is what? 32 bits minus one. I'll explain why. And then whatever we get from that, we're going to subtract minus one. Now you might kind of know why this minus one. If we look at char, we said that there's 128 characters, yet the largest value that we can represent is 127. Why not 128? Well, that is because we also have to represent the value zero. So the value zero is the first character. The value one is the second character. Therefore, the value 127 is the 128th character. So when it comes to integers, we do the same thing. We have to represent the value zero. So we subtract one from the largest value that we can represent. Now we also subtracted one from the exponent. And the reason we do that is you may have noticed, if you notice this, kudos to you, but you may have noticed that a character, we only use the first seven bits. We don't use the eighth bit. You could have said, well, if we have another bit, couldn't we represent a bunch of other characters? And there is a particular reason why we don't use this eighth bit or the first bit from left to right. There's a purpose to it. And this purpose affects also the integer data type. So we do not use the first bit uh, coming from left to right in an integer because there's a purpose to it. What purpose? We're going to talk about that on the next video because it requires a little bit of discussion and that would make this video way longer okay so we use an integer when we're trying to use very large integers now the last one that we have to talk about is a float so let me scroll down a little bit so let's say that we have a float right now floating numbers are encoded in binary format very differently than integers and booleans and characters because a floating number has a fractional part there's a whole other encoding mechanism, which I'm not gonna talk about in this video. That requires an entire video on its own. But what I want you to know is that just like, we, just like with integers, we have a maximum number that we can represent. Well, when it comes to floating numbers, you also have the smallest number that you can represent, right? So for instance, I said for integers, you have two billion. What that is a very large number. Well, what is a very small number? When we talk about floats, Oops, when we talk about floats, floats, we have a very small number, and that number could be what? 0 0.0000000001. That's a very, very small number. So when it comes to floating numbers, the limitation comes to how big the number is, just like in integers, and also how small the number is. How small the number is, we call it precision. What is the precision? of the floating number. A float is very good to represent numbers that have up to seven fractional digits. So in here we, we would say that this would be good up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So up to this point, it can represent fractional digits very well. If you try to get anything smaller than that, then a float starts to fail you. But a float has a limitation as to how big the number is and how small the number is, and this comes to be the precision of the floating number. Again, in order to specifically look at that, we will have to learn first how floating numbers are stored in binary, 
and we would need to talk about that in a separate video just to understand that all right so what i want you to get out of this video is i just want you to understand that all of these data types they all have a size in memory and this size has a certain limitation booleans they're fine there's only two of them no worries characters there's 128 of them and we don't do more than those because that would means that we would have to use this little bit and we don't use that little bit because we use it for something else and so characters can also be used to store integers so long as the integer is 127 or smaller and if you need more space to store an integer then you just go to an int and again on the next video we're going to talk about specifically what is this little bit and why is it not being used in, in either of these integer data types? And then you might be wondering, well, Daniel, you say that roughly this thing is 2 billion. 2 billion. But what happens if I want to represent a number bigger than 2 billion? If I want to go to a trillion, what do I do next? Then you also talked about this float, which says you only go to about seven fractional digits of precision. Well, what if I want to work in some scientific application or something where I need more digits of precision? Well, in that case, there's a way to modify these data types to, make, to give them more space so that they can represent larger numbers. So we're going to talk about that in the next video. So if you are watching this video, I really suggest you also watch the next ones because it's the whole package. But I didn't want to make this video too long. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you like this video and you found it useful and you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out the video series. Check out the channel if you like what you see. Subscribe, be safe, and peace out.